Hello everyone, this is Dr. Garima Sachdeva. Hope, hope all of you are doing well. And today's wisdom short is on Group B Streptococcus. Group B Streptococcus is the most common cause of neonatal infection developing within 48 hours of birth in the UK, constituting around 50% of the cases. Early on to GBS, it presents within 7 days in newborns. There is no need to screen all pregnant females for GBS because it is present in 20 to 40 percent of the cases as a natural bowel flora. If there is a history of GBS carriage in the previous pregnancy, the recurrence risk in the current pregnancy is around 50 percent. The various risk factors of GBS include previous baby, the previous baby had GBS, there is preterm birth, PROM or PPROM, or mother is a GBS carrier. Or there is intrapartum pyrexia that is temperature more than 38 degrees Celsius. So in all these cases, all the above four cases, we give IAP. However, in, in, uh, if there is intrapartum pyrexia, then instead of IAP, we give broad spectrum antibiotics which cover group B streptococcus as well. In what all cases, IAP is not required. One, because it is to protect the fetus while it travels through the birth canal. As in cesarean, it doesn't have to travel to the birth canal. So if there are cesarean sections with intact membranes, IAP is not required irrespective of the GBS status. And if the baby is IUD, again, IAP is not required. Then what are the, this, these percentages and the prevalence is very, very important. So what is the risk of GBS in term in infants with no risk factors for GBS? It is 0.2 per 1000 births. Overall risk of GBS is 0.6 per 1000 births. Risk of early onset GBS, if GBS is there, was there in previous pregnancy, it is 0.9. So, so which is around 1 in 700 to 1 in 800. Risk of early onset GBS after preterm birth is 5.2 is 2.3 per thousand birth. Risk of early on uh, early onset GBS if there is intrapartum pyrexia that is temperature more than 38 degrees Celsius it is 5.3 per thousand births which is around 1 in 200. And GBS is present in uh, as a normal bowel fl flora in around 20 to 40 percent of the adults. So that is why screening in all cases is not recommended. Then how do you manage these patients? So uh, if the patient uh, is a GBS carrier and if you don't treat them, then risk of developing early onset GBS in the baby is 1 in 500. So, you, so it is very important to treat the babies. So uh, these are the various scenarios which you get in your EMQs and SBA regarding the management of GBS. If there is a history of previous infant born with invasive GBS, then you have to give IAP. If there is preterm labor, again, because it's a risk factor for GBS, so you have to offer IAP. If there is GBS carriage in the previous pregnancy, then you have to explain that there is 50% likelihood that they will have GBS carriage in this pregnancy as well. And then you give them two options. Either you offer them IAP or you offer them bacteriological test, uh, testing 3 to 5 weeks prior to the expected delivery date which is around 35 to 37 weeks. At term, if there is pre-labor rupture of membrane and there is no GBS carri uh, carrier, so immediate IAP should be given with induction of labor as soon as possible. If there is unknown or negative GBS status, then you do, need not give IAP. The patient present in labor and there are no risk factors in no IEP. If there is pyrexia, then you offer them broad spectrum antibiotics. So you don't give IEP in these casing. cases, you give broad spectrum antibiotics which also cover GDS. What you give is IV amoxicillin 2 gram every 6 hourly or IV cefuroxine 1.5 gram every 6 hourly in women with a non anaphylactoid reaction to penicillin. Then uh, if there is GBS carriage in current pregnancy, then also you offer IAP. If there is history of GBS bacteria, bacteriuria in current pregnancy, then you treat the uh, UTI and offer IAP. If in cases the patient is going for cesarean section and the membranes are intact, then no IAP. If there is PPROM less than 34 weeks, then you give these patients steroid, you give them 
current uh, at present you give them erythromycin for 10 days and induce them at 34 weeks and while the patient is in labor you give IEP. So GBA, if there is GBS in previous pregnancy, so there is 50% recurrence rate. So you have two options. You either offer them IEP or bacteriological testing. So how does bacteriological testing help? So if bacterial, when is it done? It is done at 35 to 37 weeks of gestation or 3 to 5 weeks prior to anticipated delivery. If there is twins, you do it around 32 to 34 weeks. And if it is positive, then risk is 1, 1 in 400, then there is a point of giving IAP. If the risk is negative, then the, uh, this test comes out to be negative, then the risk is very low, 1 in 5000, no point of giving IAP. So this is also one of the options. Either you, if the patient gives history of GBS in previous pregnancy, there are two options. Either you can directly offer IAP or you can give them an option of bacteriological testing. And overall uh, risk of early onset GBS, if previous carrier, this is 1 in 700 to 1 in 800. Maternal request is not an indication for undergoing bacterial bacteriological testing. So this was all for today. Thank you so much.